Hey y'all, I am here in Louisville, Kentucky. It is Derby Day, and I am at Forme Millinery with Jenny Fan and Still. She is one of the few milliners left in the United States, and so she, all these beautiful hats that you see here, she's made them from scratch, and they are absolutely amazing. And so, Jenny, tell me a little bit about your shop. Tell me about Thank what you. you do. Well, yes, I am the owner of Couture Miller of Forme Millinery, and I use a technique that dates back over 100 years called blocking. Oh my god. I make my hats from scratch. So I use old wooden hat blocks like this. That's so cool. So this is not okay. a hat, this is actual wood. <laughs> um, and they come in different shapes and sizes. And I mold material such as this. This is a millinery straw. Is this called, okay, so I have done a little DIY <laughs> millinery myself. Not quite like what you do, but you know, making fascinators for fun. Yeah. And I've always called this cinnamon. Is That's that correct. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and so where, do you have to special order this? What yes. Happens? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, you can't go out to Joanne Fabrics. Right. 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 You do buy them at a millinery supply house. Oh, um, and wow. you can get That's them so all over the world. And I right. actually work with uh, local master dyers here in Louisville, um, Justin and Nathan from Baz and B, who do custom prints for me. So, so I, these are custom to you. Like you these are custom get to these me. anywhere else in the world. Exactly. You design this. Yep. This pattern. Wow. And then they will print cool another cinema for me. So yeah, that's you're truly really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, so tell me about these blocks too. Yeah. Now, so you said they're over. Is the technique over 100 years yes, old? Yes, the technique is over 100 years old, and some of the blocks. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, a lot of hat blocks that you find are vintage mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of the hat block makers no longer exist. Uh, the millinery industry has changed a lot over the years, and unfortunately, a lot of the supply houses went out of business, and so went the hat block makers. So, um, a lot of the ones that I have, I found on eBay, on um, estate sales, maybe a milliner's gone out of business, oh or someone found it right. in their attic. So, I have hundreds of these in all different shapes and sizes and this is that's so cool a cloche shape it which is kind of like, it kind of like sits like really closely uh -huh. to your head yeah, so like to okay yeah. i might try this one on yeah put this one down and see what so we might have a hair situation here guys <laughs> after i try these on but that's so cool what's that uh what's that this is that? actually a vintage uh like it's like cellophane material that i found in australia and then i blocked it in this shape that is so cool. Yeah. So you you like you literally let's put it on there and it's see not, sort of like it's not from this happens. exact shape, but but yes. yeah, I it took the material. Like yes, um, and then I went and steamed the material over the wood, and it, and th this particular shape it would have come down to here, and you know would have been a little bit different of a of a shape, but you get the idea. That is so cool. Okay, let's try this on. It doesn't quite go in my outfit, but. And I'll, yeah, yeah, fix it on me. Beautiful. Oh, oh great. Right. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so I'm ready for the yeah, derby, huh? Why not? Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> so tell me, that's something I'm really interested in. When someone comes into your shop and says, hey, I'm going to the Kentucky Derby, or I'm going to right. or, you know, all kinds of Belmont and Steeple Chase. I mean, I bet you have people oh, yes. from, that are going to all these races all over the world. Yes. that come. So all over the world. Where else? Tell me about... Oh my. Um, well, a lot of the ones that you've talked about, the Belmont, Saratoga, Steeplechase, um, Breeders' Cup, those are the ones in the United States. And of course, you have El Ascot, which is the most famous one in England. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so they have them all over Australia, Ireland, everywhere. <laughs> but and I guess each one kind of has its own style, and you. <laughs> okay, sorry, I think we had some technical <laughs> difficulties, but we're back. Um, so, so. Um, Jenny here, for, for anybody that's just now tuning in, I am at Forme Millinery in Louisville, Kentucky with Jenny Fannin still, and she is a milliner, and she's been telling me all about her process and what, what you need to look for if you're looking for a hat for the Kentucky Derby or any other horse race. Yeah. So, particularly for the Kentucky Derby, what, what's the look like? What do you want to go for? Well. Luckily, with the Kentucky Derby, we don't have any rules here. Oh, I like that. In compared to some other races, like the Ascot, for instance. Um, so really, anything goes, and you will see it all at the racetrack. <laughs> I, I've already seen quite, you yes. know, some really interesting, unique things. Right. Um, which is amazing. You know, I like that everybody's kind of doing this self-expression, and yeah, you know, it's kind of it's whatever fun. you want to make it. Yes, just going there and watching people and seeing what people are wearing is 
an experience in itself. But, you know, just back in the day and the old tradition for the Derby is a large brim hat. So something like okay. this. Um, you know, some people always stay with the large brim. They always think the bigger the better, go big or go home, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> so a large yeah. brim will always be great. And it's also great sun protection. I love it. So especially on a day like today at the track, you're going to want that sun protection. So it's utilitarian too. It's yeah, not just absolutely. gorgeous. It's, you know, it's, it's good for you. So, and I've seen it. I've always been interested in how you decide, like, sort of how to place your hat, because I see some people that have it cocked to the side, sort of like this, and then some people wear it straight on, like, yeah, sure. Well, what do you do? Well, one thing, one mistake that you sometimes see people wear are their brimmed hats like this. They're wearing them. Oh, like sort of on the back of your head. Kind of like a Jack and Joe pillbox. Oh, You definitely don't want that. Okay. You always want to bring it forward. And with a slight tilt. So like right above, I feel like you place it yes. right above my brow. Exactly. And okay. kind of like the two finger rule, if you put that above your eyebrow and there then you kind of place your hat there, that's about the right position. Oh, okay, great. And so what, can you tell me what the tilt's about? Like is that just well, a style thing? give a little hattitude. I love it. <laughs> a little hattitude? I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so this is, this is like the classic look for the guitar. That's a classic look. And if you want to go, if you want to get a little fancier or a little bit more out there, what what else do you do? Well, then there's what's called a fascinator okay. and a hatinator. So the definition of a fascinator is a hat that sits on your head. Where a hat covers your head, a fascinator sits on your head. And it's typically smaller in size, and the hatinator is like the fascinator where it sits on your head, but it's just larger, like a hat. Okay, so, so can you give me some examples? examples? Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. So... For instance, Gosh, this so pretty. would be considered a fascinator. It's smaller in size. And I like to use elastic because it sits on your head um, much better, what I find, than like a comb or a headband. Right. And the elastic, ladies and gentlemen, does, does not go under your chin. I, where does it go? <laughs> it goes under your hair behind oh. your ears. It's okay, not so a birthday hat. Is this it for like a, um, so can you do it with your yeah. hair down? Yes. Oh, so, okay. so I'll hold it on here. Yeah, that's perfect. So the elastic it goes under your hair, behind your ears. Okay. And then you take a brush and brush over the elastic, and it will hide it. So it just goes right there. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna let it's you like do that. it. I think you know a little bit better. There you go. And this one has veiling, so this one goes over your eye just a bit. Oh, that's so cool. I love yeah. it. Okay, so this is a hat hair. A fascinator. This is a fascinator. Just because it's a little bit smaller in okay. size. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I would think that this would like sort of. <laughs> I feel so cool. Let's see. It. You can wear this to the track and then go out for cocktails afterwards. Yeah. And it'll just blend right in. So. Okay, cool. And so, so I guess like their fascinators kind of come in all shapes and sizes. Like there's no rather, like no rules for a fascinator. Right. You can right. kind of do, because I see you have a beautiful yep. bow here. Yes. And then, what did you call this next one? That's so cool. Well, the, the bow is, is made out of silk abaca that I get from Australia that I hand sculpt and then sculpt it into that beautiful. shape. Uh, this one I made with cinnamon uh, on the back side, and then it. I pleated fabric on top of it. Uh, this one is made of liquid glass that I painted, and then I heated up and then sculpted it to a rose, of course. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so how do you get that kind of color in there? Uh, just by, when I paint it, I just... just painting, yep, okay. Hand, hand painting. Wow. Hand painting. You can obviously do it in any color, so... Um, because I'm a milliner, I do lots of custom work. So, yeah. um, you know, I measure someone's head, I, we pick out the shape, the material, and I can make a hat just for you. So, oh, and cool. I can customize something um, to your specific needs and your outfit. Okay, so you um, you can make it, like you literally make it to fit my head. Exactly. And how does that work? How do you measure to know, like, what is the perfect size for me? Well. Um, believe it or not, you just you take a tape measure and everyone has kind of a little bump behind their head, uh -huh. and you just place it there and go right above your eyebrow, and that's the two and, finger rule. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Kind of where your hat would sit, yes. Okay. And, and then that's your head size, and about two, 22 and a half is an average head size. Um, that's a big head. <laughs> well, you know, depends on how much hair you have, and of course, the larger the brain, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, um, that's what my mom always told me. I've had hats up to 26 inches. So. Oh wow, so cool. Okay, so now I want to try on a different type. Let's do a different um, fascinator that maybe fits on a little bit differently, um, a different way than, than the elastic. 
how we're gonna, I want to feel the difference well, and how, a, um, how we can do. Well, here's oh, a headband. It just kind of matches my outfit. It does. It does. And again, I block uh, the cinema over a half block, and then I've adorned it with trim and beading. And this is, I like to incorporate vintage embellishments and materials. So this is a vintage bake light. How cool. Hat pin. And this is a headband. It fits just like normal. Oh, right nice. behind your ears. Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So, you know, like, do these things get in the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, you, you do have to sometimes be careful with that. <laughs> Fashion part, though, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. And tell me about what you're wearing. That's really pretty. Oh, this is a, a wool hat. You know, I, I do more than just derby hats. So I make hats for all seasons and occasions. And so I do a winter line as well. This is just a wool little fascinator I'm wearing. I love that. That's Thank great. You. And so tell me. You know, you were telling me a little bit earlier, Jenny is multi-talented, and she actually has a book available. I do. Um, and so I kind of want to hear about that and where I can get it. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I, I was asked by Dover Publications, which is a publishing company in New York, to write a book about millinery. Okay. And it's um, specifically a hat-making project book with nine different hat-making projects, step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a hat from scratch. Uh, and then I also talk about the different materials used, the hat blocks, and all that great stuff. So um, it's available on Dover Publications website or Amazon. Okay, cool. Um, your okay. local craft store. The Making of a Milliner. The Making of a Milliner. Okay, very cool. So if you guys out there want to pick up a new <laughs> hobby, a really yeah. cool new hobby, and join actually sort of a club of very few people, <laughs> yeah. this is what you need. Yes. Um, and so you also do some patterns. So I do. This is a hobby that you want to put, pick up, um, you can also buy some of Jen, Jenny's patterns to start with. Okay, yes. so I'm a hat designer for McCall patterns. So oh, this cool. is all flat pattern hats, so it's a little bit different than the different. blocking, but just like you would sew clothing on the machine, this is just done with hats, and so this is my second flat pattern hats uh, out with McCall's. Very nice. Okay. Well, so what else do we have over here? Because I see like a lot going on that yeah. I, I don't know about. Well, these are other... Uh, brims, other examples of brimmed hats, uh, just in different shapes. So you had earlier tried on a large brim hat, so this is an example of a medium sized brim. And oh, it's kind of like a long too. Yeah, I don't think I've seen one like that. Oval. That's amazing. Um, and for someone like myself, who's a little bit vertically challenged, not as tall as some people, um, you know, a large brim, you can really get swallowed under it. Yeah. So going with, you know, a more medium sized brim really can benefit you if you're a little bit shorter in height. So Yeah, very cool. Okay. Yeah. And so it looks like other than this close here and this one, um, it looks like these are all cinnamon hats. Is that right? Well, this one is made out of what's called parasisal. Okay, so they about parasisal. Parasisal is a tighter weave. So if you notice, this one's made out of cinnamon and it's a little bit more It's like sheer and, yes. and you can kind of, so it feels super summery. Yeah, and, and the sun will come through it. Um, Parasisal is definitely a more dense, um, more um, close woven um, material. And, um, you know, if you're looking for very specific sun protection where you're not going to get any sun on your face, you want to go this route. Okay, got it. That's very good. Well, now that I kind of have like an overview of all the hats, I am going to the derby today, so I would love for you to help me pick out a hat. Sure, what should sure. I wear? So obviously, hat on red, a little bit of black. Yeah. What, what's your gut feeling? What do you think we should do here? Well, I love what you're wearing. I think you could definitely pull off a fascinator, okay. or even you know go with um, a brim hat. But you know, what about this one with the butterflies? Oh, this one, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like that has my name on it. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> so let me take this one off. And this one is made again of silk abaca that I get from Australia. Uh, and then I hand sculpt it. So the elastic again goes under your hair, right behind okay, your ears. Hair, right. I'm gonna get you to fix it on that side. Yeah, good. That looks great. And so I don't have to pin it or no. anything. Nope. It's ready to go. And you can bend over and move around. Yep. It's not gonna come off. Oh, I'm so <laughs> excited. You're well, ready. thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am ready to go to the Derby, and I appreciate it. So I hope you guys enjoy Derby Day, and see you later.